The concept of linear, as in linear transformations, is one of those things in mathematics that's so simple, it may actually be a little bit confusing. And writing down the equations that define it usually doesn't help the understanding. So eventually we will write down those equations and we'll discuss them. But first I'd like to give you a very simple example that illustrates linearity. So that in the future, when you're considering whether a particular transformation is linear, you can think back to this example, and if your transformation is like this example, then it's linear. And if it's unlike it, then it's nonlinear. So here is that example. Imagine that you're an American in Paris, and you're there at a time when the exchange rate is one euro is a dollar fifty. And one morning, you wake up, you decide to have some breakfast, you go downstairs, look at the menu, and you discover that the eggs are four euros, and that coffee is two euros. Being American, of course, you're interested in the total cost of your breakfast in dollars. So you have to convert euros to dollars. So think of that conversion as a transformation. The inputs are the amounts in euros. The outputs are the amounts in dollars. Now, if you want to find out the total cost of your breakfast in dollars, there are actually two ways to carry out the transformation. You can first find out the total cost of your breakfast in euros. And if you have one order of eggs and one coffee, that would be six euros. And you would then convert the six euros to dollars, and you would discover that the total cost of your breakfast is nine dollars. Now here's the alternative way of doing it. It's almost the same, but it's not quite the same. You could convert each individual amount to dollars first. And of course the eggs would be six dollars, and coffee would be three dollars. And having converted each amount, you can then add up the dollar amount. Six plus three is of course nine, so the total cost of your breakfast is once again nine. So it doesn't matter whether you add the amounts first and then convert or transform to dollars, or whether you transform each individual amount and then add up the results. The final answer, nine dollars, is independent of, of whether you add it first, then transformed, or whether you transformed the individual amounts first and then added them together. That's linearity. This property that it doesn't matter whether you addition first and then the transformation, or the two individual transformations first and then the addition, that's the hallmark of linearity. That's actually just half of it. The other half is, imagine you decide to have two coffees. So that's four euros. So once again, it doesn't matter if we just focus on the coffee without the eggs. You can do one of two things. Let's say you have three coffees, so we have two different numbers. So you could trans transform the cost of an individual coffee to dollars. That would be three dollars. And then realizing that you had three coffees, multiply that amount by three, and the result will be nine dollars. Alternatively, you could find the cost of all of the coffees in euros, and that's two times three, six, and then convert this product to dollars, and realize once again the three coffees would cost nine dollars. So here is another operation that doesn't matter whether you do it before the transformation or after the transformation. Multiplication by a scalar. In this case that scalar was three, and it didn't matter whether you multiply the euro amount by three first and then transform, or whether you transform first and then multiply the result by the scalar three. In both cases we got the same answer, and of course this example is so simple then you don't even have to think much or apply mathematics to realize that yes, whether you do it first or last, the answer will be the same. So those are the two hallmarks of linearity. If the transformation that you're considering is like that, that it doesn't matter whether you add or multiply by a scalar first and then transform, or whether you transform the individual elements and then form the linear combination and then multiply and then add. If the order doesn't matter, then the transformation is linear. So let's write down as an equation what we just realized in words. So a transformation would be linear if it doesn't matter whether you add first 
and then transform. Add first and then transform. Or whether you transform the individual elements and then add the results. Let me make sure that it fits. It just fit. Okay? And the second property that we discovered is that it doesn't matter whether you multiply, let's use u, that whether you multiplied by a scalar first and then transformed, or whether you transformed first and then multiplied by the same scalar. So if your transformation or function or map has this property, then it will be considered linear. The nice thing about these two definitions is that they can be combined into a single definition. And for that, you need the concept of linear combinations, of course. So if you, here is how you would write it down and how you would say it. I'll do it simultaneously. So it doesn't matter whether you evaluate the linear combination first and then apply the transformation or whether you apply the transformation to the individual elements and then combine them in the same linear combination. And this equal sign means that the order of these two things doesn't matter. So here we form the linear combination first and then transform the result versus transforming the individual vectors and then combining them in the exact same linear combination. If you have equality, then the transformation is linear. And I just want to point out that what these equations state in words is exactly what we discussed here. It doesn't matter whether you add eggs to coffee first and then convert their price to dollars, or whether you convert their price to dollars first and then add the dollar amounts. And in this case, it doesn't matter whether you multiply the cost of the coffee in euros by the number of coffees that you had and then transform the total euro amount into dollars versus transforming the cost of an individual coffee into dollars and then multiplying by the number of coffees that you had. So as you can see, these two properties are almost the same thing and they can in fact be combined into a single property. So we will now march through our three favorite spaces, geometric vectors, polynomials or functions, and then finally Rn, and we'll consider transformations in each one of these spaces, and we'll decide whether or not they're linear, and then we'll introduce another very important concept along the way, and we'll do it in each case on their own terms. So that motto of treating all objects on uh, their own terms is now back in full force.